Thank you, Speaker, and congratulations on your election. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to their elders. I acknowledge the former member for Bentley, Elizabeth Miller, and wish her well for the future. Speaker, I rise today humbled by the faith and trust the people of Bentley have shown in me by electing me as their representative in this place. This is an honour not to be taken lightly and a role to be taken seriously for its potential to improve people's lives. The Bentley electorate has a rich history. Moorabbin and Bentley were home to the first large-scale market gardens outside of the city and supplied Victoria with produce for many years. The Marriott and Brady families were just some of the market gardeners in our local area. And like other gardeners in the area, one or two days a week, they would load their carts with their produce and make the two to four hour journey along what is now the Nepean Highway to the markets of Melbourne, a journey which today takes just 30 or 40 minutes. It has been an amazing experience growing up in the area and thinking about its former semi-rural landscape. McKinnon, with its vast expanse of onion crops and its biggest animal management issue being wandering horses. Bentley, with the excitement of its race course, which today is the Bentley Hodgson Reserve, a beautiful park enjoyed by local families. Moorabbin, which hosted a wireless receiving station in the middle of a paddock during the Second World War and intercepted transmissions critical to the success of the Allied forces. It is a local area steeped in history. Bentley gets its name from Sir Thomas Bent, a local market gardener who served as a local councillor and local MP and then went on to become the 22nd Premier of Victoria. Sir Thomas was known to make decisions as a minister to benefit his vast property portfolio. <laughs> as Minister for Railways, he approved rail lines in areas that would boost the value of his properties. He even offered this to other MPs in exchange for votes in the party leadership. Speaker, Sir Thomas is one predecessor in the local area that I will not be using as inspiration for my work as a Member of Parliament. However, I am inspired by the Labor members for Bentley that have come before me. I'm the fourth Labor MP for Bentley and pay tribute to Gordon Hockley, Ann Barker and Rob Hudson. They were three local members totally committed to our local community. I took some time recently to read their inaugural speeches that they delivered in the House. Gordon Hockley was the first Labor MP for Bentley. He was elected in 1979 by a mere 95 votes, yet served in Bentley undefeated. In his speech, he spoke of important issues that people face on a day-to-day -day basis, like dilapidated schools and unemployment. He was a great grassroots local member. I'd never met Gordon, but was told if you campaign as well as Gordon Hockley and are engaged in the local community as much as he was, you will win the seat for sure. Ann Barker was elected in 1988. She was later elected the member for Oakley and I worked in her office for a brief period and got to know Anne for the hard-working local member she was. In her first speech as the member for Bentley, she spoke of education, specifically the introduction of the education maintenance allowance and the expansion of the local TAFE campus in Moorabbin, both still topical issues 26 years later. I thank Anne for her continuing friendship. Rob Hudson was elected in 2002. He guided me through my first local council election campaign and in the campaign for Bentley this year. I could never have asked for a better mentor and friend. In his speech, he spoke of his lifelong passion of addressing inequality and talked about the growing gap between the poorest and wealthiest sections of our community. In political life, Rob was instrumental in the development of a fairer Victoria, which was the Brax government's blueprint to address social exclusion. It was no surprise to me that after politics, Rob went back to work for the Brotherhood of St Lawrence. Gordon, Anne and Rob were three champions for Bentley and I'm totally mindful of the big shoes to fill. Speaker, it was nearly 10 years ago that I was elected to the Glen Ira City Council. At 19, I was the youngest councillor. This proved to be a very daunting experience, but a rewarding one nonetheless. A particular highlight was the decision to build the Glen Ira Sports and Aquatic Centre, which was supported with funding from state and federal Labor governments. Today, GSAC has 15,000 members and attracts 1.1 million visits each year. But my most treasured work as a councillor did not involve allocating a multi-million dollar sum to a major capital works project. One of the biggest public health issues in our local community is social isolation. It is not merely feeling lonely, it is a lot deeper than that. It is complete disconnect from the world around you. It is not having anyone to turn to in times of need. It is both a trigger and symptom of mental illness. And it is usually involuntary. 
Local government seeks to address this mental health challenge through the provision of community infrastructure like senior citizen centres and community centres. But this endeavour is futile without community groups and the volunteers behind them. Each day I see the enormous power of volunteers and members of local communities coming together to improve the lives of the people around them. I feel honoured to have been part of local groups that seek to do this and I would like to talk about some of them just briefly. The first invitation I received as a local councillor was from the East Bentley Senior Citizens Club. I later became a life member of this seniors club but that is another story. It is a group of nearly 500 members totally committed to keeping seniors active and improving their quality of life. Any day of the week at the Senior Citizen Centre on Derry Street you will find people playing table tennis, carpet bowls and line dancing. Uh, you'll find the m members of the club's concert party singing and dancing and putting on a show for local schools. It is, a it is a place where people stay healthy by staying active and connected with other people. A number of years ago I was introduced to the very important work of neighbourhood houses. Surprisingly, Glen Ira was the only council in the area that did not have a funding agreement with our neighbourhood houses, something I was determined to change. Throughout each year that I was a councillor, I campaigned for greater funding for our neighbourhood houses so that they can serve more people isolated from their communities. It was years before this agreement was put in place due to the length of time it took to convince other councillors, particularly those who would argue that funding neighbourhood houses was not core business. It was not until I left council and joined Godfrey Street Community House as its new chairperson that I developed a proper understanding of the role of neighbourhood houses. Shirley Franklin was Godfrey Street's coordinator for more than 20 years. She once said to me that the aim of a neighbourhood house is to get people through the front door. The computer classes, art groups and exercise sessions on offer are designed to make it easier for people who are isolated to join the neighbourhood house. People like Anne who has bipolar and finds she's able to deal with this by volunteering at the house. Or people like Wendy, who is confronting some terrible issues at home and finds that the only solace she gets is the two hours she spends each week painting with Russell, Godfrey Street's art teacher. When you consider the thousands of people who have joined the neighbourhood house over the last 30 years, many with depression, anxiety and other mental health issues, you get a sense of the value of investing in local community groups. Griefline Family and Community Services has a similar aim. It was formed 25 years ago at Bethlehem Hospital when the need for counselling was identified for bereaved families. It has grown over the years to be an organisation with more than 200 volunteers offering a range of services to the community, including telephone counselling. Last year, this local community group, which is run out of a modest house in East Bentley, received 51,000 phone calls from people who needed to talk to someone. What these three community groups share is the aim of keeping people healthy and active, the aim of addressing social isolation. And they do this with very modest resources and little government funding. And I certainly will make it my priority as a member of this place to ensure that groups like these are properly supported. Like many people in the Bentley electorate, my family's life as Australians began 50 years ago at the docks in Port Melbourne when my grandparents stepped off the boat with two daughters, one of them my mother, to begin a new life. Leaving their home behind and moving to a foreign country was a tough decision, but they wanted their children to have the opportunities that they did not have in Greece. My grandmother passed away during the campaign, and while the process of grieving was truncated by the need to keep going, I have had the opportunity to reflect on the experience of my grandparents coming to Australia and why I was running for Parliament. My grandparents came to Australia with no money and no English. They came looking for work. The only word my grandmother could say in English was job. Shortly after arriving in Australia, she got on a tram not knowing where she was going. She stepped off the tram, walked into a building and was employed that day. When my grandparents came to Australia, jobs were plentiful, but poor wages and conditions meant it was difficult to get by. Indeed, they worked three jobs each in order to afford the rent of one bedroom in a house. Trade unions have fought hard over many years for the workplace conditions we enjoy today. But so many years on, the labour market has new challenges. Many of us have watched in horror as industries have shut down and moved offshore. Over the last four years, we have seen the ever-increasing unemployment rate in Victoria become the highest on the Australian mainland and the highest it has been in 13 years. The departure of the auto manufacturing industry will have a devastating impact, one that will be felt in my electorate. Throughout the industrial areas of Moorabbin and East Bentley, 
are various component manufacturer, manufacturers that are now at risk. I visited one of these manufacturers during the campaign. I stood on the factory floor, looked around and saw workers predominantly aged in their 50s. They began their careers during a time when it was common for people to live near their workplace, as many had done at this particular workplace for nearly 90 years. They will be unemployed in two years' time. Meeting these workers reminded me of my father, who was made redundant in his 50s after being with his employer for 30 years. It was very difficult to find another job. There will be thousands of workers in a similar position in years to come, which is why it was absolutely critical that Victorians elected a government with a jobs plan. It is easy for a government to respond by saying that the economy is transitioning, but we need to be sure of what we are transitioning to. We needed a government with a vision, a vision for jobs that sees companies engaging with government to transition to the industries that will create the high skill, high wage jobs that our state needs. The job story, the legacy of the Andrews Labor government will be in grasping opportunity and building a strong future for Victoria. This is contrasted with the way jobs and skills have been approached in the past. I spoke of my grandparents' arrival in Australia and of the way things once were for workers like my grandmother and grandfather. The labour market has changed since then. 60 years ago, ago, workers were directly employed and had a certain degree of security in their jobs. Workers had permanent jobs and could plan a future. Workers never really had to shift between industries and skills never really had to be adaptable. You could have specialised skills and not require constant retraining. Nowadays, a job workers can count on has become increasingly rare. 40% of workers are now in insecure work, often engaged in contracting arrangements which give workers no protections, but all of the risks involved in an employment relationship. Workers have no capacity to plan a life when their livelihood depends on a text message on the morning they want to work, letting them know whether they've got employment for the day or not. Workers are denied their dignity and the opportunity to contribute to the economy. Workers engaged in labour hire contracting arrangements are often caught up in complex webs of sham contracting that see them exploited. This is a problem that is growing in our country, and it is a problem that only the Andrews government has committed to solve. For the first time in this country, a government will seek to address the problem of rogue labour hire agencies who operate across virtually all industries imaginable, from poultry processing to warehouse work and logistics. The Andrews government wants to create a, lic a licensing scheme for labour hire firms where we'll hold an inquiry into insecure work in Victoria, including the misuse of visas to avoid Australian workplace laws, which results in the exploitation of many workers. Labor knows that every worker counts and that every job is worth fighting for. And it is a fight that I know with our vision, with our passion, we can win. The election campaign proved to be very long, very arduous, but very rewarding. We made some fantastic commitments to the Bentley electorate that I look forward to delivering. Commitments like the removal of level crossings at Centre Road, McKinnon Road and North Road and the completion of redevelopments at McKinnon and Bentley Secondary Colleges. But as we all know, election campaigns require the assistance of many people to get these messages out in the local community. I was fortunate to have a very dedicated campaign team led by our field organiser Kat Hardy, campaign manager Jared Panther and campaign treasurer Robin Dale. I want to thank them for their hard work and their friendship. To the people who have supported me over many years, people like Simon Crean, who recruited me to the Labor Party in my teenage years, the member for Narry Warren South, not only a dear friend, but also my greatest mentor. I want to thank the Attorney General and the Treasurer. Both these men have supported me from the pre-selection to the campaign, and I would simply not be here without them. To the Minister for Agriculture in the other place, Jala Pulford, a very supportive friend, who I know has been in the thoughts of members of both sides of the House in recent times. To all of my supporters, to the National Union of Workers, to Philip Daladakis, to the member for Clorinda, the member for Oakley, uh, Councillor Steve Stakos, John Linders, Rob Hudson, Claire O'Neill, Betty Appleton, Tim Jackson, Karina Garland, Robbie Williamson, Bruce Wilson and Nick Van Tunis. Thank you to the Premier, who led a strong opposition and is now leading a strong government that has made us all very proud to be Labor. Finally, thank you to my family, especially my mum and dad. Without them uh, and the values they taught me, I would not be here. Thank you.